Hey Memorizers, Anthony Medivier here with another Magnetic Memory Mondays newsletter video edition. I had a very important question about the principle of not crossing your own path in the Magnetic Memory method. And not crossing your own path is essential to the Magnetic Memory method and essential to using Memory Palaces in general. Um, memory Palaces, in case you're watching this fresh, is, is a method of using real locations that you're familiar with in order to store information using some other principles that I talk about in my Magnetic Memory series books and in my video course. But not crossing your own path is one of the fundamentals. And the reason why is because it uses mental energy to sort of follow along what you're doing uh, as you wander through your memory palace to recall certain information. And it's also just part of mental organization. You want to pre-plan and predetermine your memory palaces before you start using them to store information so that you know where you're going and you limit the potential for having confusion and so forth. And some memory palaces have hundreds, if not several hundred stations within them. So we want to have a certain amount of directness, linear movement throughout them. So this question is really great. So before I talk about this illustration that we have here, let me get to the question that uh, inspired its creation. And this uh, letter and this illustration comes from a relatively long-term reader of the Magnetic Memory newsletter. And he writes, I have a doubt about the subject, do not cross your own path. I've read your book that explains step-by-step -step how to build memory palaces. I understood the whole point of this, but not crossing your own path is not clear to me. In order to express my properly, myself properly, I'm giving a description and an image of my memory palace to be clearer. My first memory palace is my house. I have planned the start point, which is the first bathroom. This is to avoid any dead end. And I'll just interject here that that's another major principle is not trapping yourself inside of a memory palace. So if you start in the middle of your house, you might not only just cross your own path, but you might come into a dead end. So you need to think about how that you can have a linear movement outside your house so you can add more stations later. So he gives a breakdown of the order, how he'll wander through his palace, and he starts with number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and number seven, as you can see in the diagram. The first is uh, the bathroom, the second is uh, a major room, the third is a bedroom, the fourth is the dining room, the fifth is a kitchen, the sixth is another bathroom attached to the kitchen, and the seventh is a living room. The letter continues, the point is this, when I finish wandering to the dining room, I take a walk to the kitchen and then to the kitchen's bathroom. But after taking a walk in the kitchen's bathroom, this sounds kind of funny, is the living room. To get through the living room, you need to pass through the kitchen again, and after that, I find myself in the living room. Is it possible to do it? Have I crossed my own way? For me, it seems like this is a no way back at that point. I ask you this because I want to make the most of the spaces in my memory palace so I can prepare enough stations. What do you suggest? Thank you very much. All the best. Well, this is a very, very good question, and thank you so much for sending in this drawing of your memory palace. I should mention that this is a very, very, very good idea to actually draw out the memory palace. You can do it in a blueprint sort of format like we have here, or you could do 3D if you're uh, able to uh, draw in that way. Uh, there's a slight 3D element here with uh, the staircase. Uh, you can also use Excel files, and I have a video that you may have seen or may not uh, about using Excel files to help store your memory palaces. And actually, if you do both drawing and the Excel file, uh, this is really makes your memory palaces much more vivid and vibrant in your mind, which is exactly what you want. Um, so using those two methods together is really great, but definitely one or the other. Uh, and drawing is especially good for visual people. Um, so essentially using your description, we see that you are starting here at number one, going to number two, then to three, then to four, number five, and then number six to the bathroom. And the problem is when you come out of this bathroom, you go to the living room and you're therefore crossing your own path. And that leads to really needing to think as you're recalling information and testing your memorized material, well, you know, uh, did I go here? Did I go there? What's the path? I don't know exactly how this house looks when you're inside of it, but my question would be is if it's in any way possible to travel from one to two to four to three to seven, to five, and then to six. And then it looks like you have a staircase here, which can then lead you to creating more palaces on another floor, or perhaps you can go outside. 
uh, sorry, not more palaces, but more stations within this memory palace, and you can continue adding on in a linear path. Um, another option might be is, is there a way to move from 6 to 5 to 7, 4, 3, 2, 1, or whatever. Any way that allows you to not have to uh, cross your own path will will just simply make this a much more powerful memory palace. And one of the reasons why that also makes it more powerful is whenever possible, you can actually have more than one station in each room. So here, number one, looks like it should really just be one station. It's a, it's a bathroom after all. Mind you, you could use the shower for a station, you could use the toilet for a station, the sink, the mirror, maybe there's a little closet here, I don't know. That's more advanced when you start using multiple stations inside of a single room. For beginners we want to use just one room, but nonetheless there's potential. And corners are really good, so you have a corner here, a corner here, a corner here, a corner here. It depends on the layout of the room. Um, you talk about number three being uh, your room, which I assume is your bedroom, so you can have uh, uh, the bed as a memory palace, a, a, a bookcase as a memory palace, the closet, etc. Again, that's more advanced, uh, and it leads to more potential that you'll cross your own path, but not if you carefully prepare and predetermine your memory palaces. Now, if it's not possible to rearrange the order of these rooms so that you can make a linear journey without having to go from seven, five, six, and or from four to seven to five to six and then back to seven, crossing through five, if that's not possible, then maybe it's possible in your layout to actually mentally go through your journey looking into each station in your memory palace by standing at the doorway and not actually going into the into the room. So for example, if you imagine yourself being here instead of here, you can actually have the best of both worlds because mentally you look into room number one and mentally you look into room number two and mentally into four and three and seven and five. It depends on the layout of the room, but often when I'm using memory palaces, I don't actually enter the rooms. That's not really necessary. You can just sort of walk by them using hallways and so forth and peer into the doors and see that associative imagery that you've placed inside the memory palace. So that's a very, very effective way to go about things um, when possible. So uh, a lot of people ask me about, you know, not crossing your own path and going into rooms and all this sort of stuff. One of the easiest ways to solve it is just simply not to enter the room, but just look into the room, um, mentally, of course. Uh, and so you're wandering, so, uh, so to speak, not in each palace, but, but uh, from room to room. Uh, throughout your memory palace. So, again, the idea is is that even if you're using multiple stations in each palace, you can stand at the door and look in. And that's really where you still don't want to cross your own path. So before we said that maybe there's uh, the shower here, the sink here, the mirror above the sink, and maybe some sort of shelving. Well, if you're standing here and looking in, you want to still obey that principle of not crossing your own path. How you could do that in a small room like a, a bathroom would be as simple as starting at this shelving, going to the mirror, down to the sink, over to the shower, and then perhaps just using this entire wall as a station so that you get back out again. Um, or if that leads to crossing your own path here as you turn that way, then you would need to think in advance, I'll go in this direction, the wall, the shower, the sink, the mirror, and then over to the bookshelf, or the, the shelving unit that may or may not be there. So I hope that that's clear, these different strategies. Um, again, drawing it out is a great way to help visualize the memory palace and really um, build familiarity with the journey that you're taking through it. And when it comes to testing, you do want to move from station to station and be able to do so without uh, interference from the path itself. And that's the ultimate point, is you don't want your memory palace or the journey through the memory palace to have some sort of interference with itself. You want it to be smooth, just as you would move through uh, a house in regular life. You don't go in circles all the time. You use a hallway to go from door to door. So. For people just beginning or even advanced users, that's a very, very good idea. Is you don't actually have to enter the room. You could just peer through the door mentally and look at your different stations inside of the room or the room as an entire station in and of itself. 
So I hope that helps. Thanks again for your question. And you know, if you are finding this information very useful and enjoy learning from video, I have a video course that I've made that it has specifically to do with memorizing foreign language vocabulary, but you can also use it to learn the magnetic memory method itself. And it's well, it's four hours or so, and there's multiple documents inside of it, including five volumes of the Magnetic Memory Newsletter, and there's some bonuses and whatnot inside of it. And, you know, it's a fully guaranteed 30 days. Uh, you can go in, get what you need. If you're not 100% satisfied, you can return it. There's absolutely no hard feelings from me. I really want you to come, get what you need, learn this method, share it with others. And there's a special code, 50% off, down there for you to give it a try. So if you're interested in more training like this, the full view of the magnetic memory method, then that's there for you as a resource to learn from. And of course, you can subscribe to this channel to get more videos when I make them. Also, subscribe to the magnetic memory newsletter. At this point, it's as easy as sending me an email at learn and memorize at zoho.com. And this is a daily newsletter. It has a lot of really neat content like this. Lots of questions come in from people. And we go through memorization techniques every single possible angle that we could possibly imagine uh, for improving our minds and just generally thinking about the potential of this brain that's sitting behind our eyes. And so I hope you will join and thanks a lot for watching and send in your questions. I'm very happy to answer them.